Yes. So, uh, yeah. I'd like uh, Dr. Sujata to take over and uh, start the seminar for us. Thank you, Dr. Sujata. Right, right. Uh, thank you, Karthik. Um, as you were saying, welcome all participants, those who have registered, those who are coming in, welcome. And um, as they say that uh, behind every crisis, behind every difficulty, there is an opportunity. And while the COVID-19 has wreaked so much havoc, uh, what a pandemic it's been and still going on and the trouble that the whole world is practically under lockdown, more than 75% of it. Yet I would say that there are some things that have emerged which might be even positive. And what it has done is it has, so while we are maintaining social distancing, I would say while we are maintaining physical distancing, socially we can still remain connected, we can still remain together. And uh, with uh, modern technology, this has become not just possible, it's a reality, it's a virtual reality. You're all in touch and uh, with the webinars and all the enthusiastic people are organizing just for the love of homeopathy. We are all together, we are going back to our roots, we are learning things that we have gotten to uh, in all the mayhem that of daily uh, life that we've been leading. So uh, this is a wonderful opportunity. I thank uh, the I Love Homeopathy group. I thank Dr. Karthik for giving me this opportunity to connect with all of you. And uh, this is a very unusual kind of presentation that I'm making today. I generally, I'm doing a lot of research, a clinical research. I'm doing my presentations at various forums, various international conferences. Uh, but a uh, uh, remedy uh, and dissecting a remedy like this uh, is very unusual, especially the kind of the combination that we have taken to give today. That is of calcarea carbonicum and calcarea sulfuricum. We often take calcarea carb and calcarea phos together. Or we take calcarea carb and silica together. Or we do uh, calcarea sulf and, hip, uh, sulf and hepar salt together. But never calcarea carb and calcarea sulf together. And uh, uh, you'll see how uh, interesting it gets. I just hope I make it interesting enough for you people. But uh, some unknown facets of both the remedies, I'd like to unravel some things that we know, but we have probably, uh, they're at the back of our minds nowadays. We're not really applying them in clinical practice. So let's just refresh some of our knowledge and some things that uh, we might just bring on, which probably we have not uh, come across until now. So uh, nothing is possible. This whole presentation, this whole webinar would not have been possible without the wonderful teamwork that we have been uh, doing and I must thank my team profusely using this platform uh, for being with me all the time. Uh, today Dr. Saili, Dr. Vedi, Dr. Shubha from my research team are there and of course the other team members, uh, also the people from uh, behind, you know, from uh, the background who keep helping us but these are from the research team and they are going to help me with the presentation today, Dr. Vedi and Dr. Saili. So I would like to start uh, cal calcarea carbonicum and calcarea sulfuricum, the applications, the differentiation, and the case studies. Okay. Just a Dr. Saili, can we have the presentation, please? Yes, uh, Dr. Good, I think Goodney from Iceland. Good this day. is uh, this is Goodney from Iceland. Yeah, welcome. <coughs> Welcome all participants. In case those who come in late, uh, you can always ask some questions. I'll be happy to. We have plenty of time today. I believe that we have time until yeah. 6.30. 6.30, yes. Uh, yes, 6.30. Uh, so uh, uh, good two and a half hours. So um, let's let's just have a very nice, relaxed session. And uh, a lot of uh, people, it might be a post-lunch one, but I just hope that I can manage to keep all of you awake. Some people, it may be morning in uh, Europe and uk and uh, i hope this is a good wake up session for you so uh, calcarea carbonicum and calcarea sulfuricum application and differentiation through case studies and uh, we know that calcium is such an important element calcium without calcium we wouldn't be able to function it is one of the most important elements required for functioning of and uh, salts of calcium, as we know, are a little insoluble, mostly insoluble, very slowly absorbed. And the uh, deficiency of calcium or excess of calcium, both may be responsible for several ailments, several diseases, and several nutritional issues. 
So uh, what does calcium affect actually? Calcium absorption can affect bones, muscles, blood, and nerves. And it is present, uh, there are two ways you can get your calcium. One is, of course, through uh, ingested uh, food items which contain calcium. So you, you know that milk and all dairy products are rich in calcium. And uh, the other way is the absorption through the gut. So even if you have a good amount of calcium in your diet, if it is not getting optimally absorbed from the gut, then you can still suffer from deficiency of calcium. You can suffer from malabsorption of uh, several problems. So uh, what happens when there is a difficulty in assimilation of calcium? What happens when there's difficulty in os uh, difficulty in ossification, in impaired ossification? That's when the application of our remedy today, calcarea carbonicum, will start. Calcarea carbonicum is made from the middle layer of the oyster shell. We know that the oyster shell at the seashore, we often pick it up and bring it, and then you have the, the lovely pearl inside. In chemical terms, calcarea carbonica is impure cal calcium carbonate. It was proved by Dr. Handyman. So it's a very, very basic remedy. And let me tell you that uh, it is one of the best proven remedies of uh, our Materia Medica. And the reason why calcarea carb, carb is so widely used and so widely uh, effective in um, treating several uh, ailments is because one is that it's very well proven. And two is uh, because it uh, affects the constitution at every stage in life. And especially in children, infants and children, I think at 20% of uh, the pediatric population will require calcarea carbonicum. And uh, if you can, and as you see that as the person grows older and older, cal calcarea carbonicum may be required lesser. Except that in uh, if a person still requires calcarea carbonicum old and his constitution is always calcarea carbonicum, then you know that it's one of the best core constitutions you can get. And as Dr. George Vichulka says that an old person requiring calcarea carbonicum means that he is of sound constitution and probably because belongs to the best levels of health. So uh, we talk about this remedy today and uh, we see its sphere of action. One is of course impaired nutrition, which is the keynote of calcarea carb. And when this gets impaired, then it affects the glands, the skin, the bones, the blood and circulation, the chest, heart, and very, very, as you know, it's a very useful remedy in children. And uh, faulty absorption of calcium causes deficiency, and that leads to insufficient. When, you, when the bones get insufficient calcium, that is when there is problem in the development, problem with the milestones, delayed milestones in children, uh, delayed uh, the, the fontanel closure is delayed. So everything gets delayed. The development gets delayed. delayed. Sometimes there is difficulty in uh, mental development as well. Although a lot of calcareas will show uh, a delayed defective uh, physical constitution of a very sharp mental uh, constitution and the typical calcarea carb personality everybody knows that fair flabby the typical leukophlegmatic constitution but uh, we should also note that the asian and the african population are not so fair they probably have brown or dark or ebony skin and would calcarea still be indicated of course it would be fair does not mean uh, in terms of color it could also mean a pale anemic constitution chalky white they say so even if the person is dark you can see if he becomes pale and if he looks anemic then that's calcarea carb so a fair fat flabby very flabby low muscle tone most of the calcareas are very uh, very coarse in their look they are not the very refined types like phosphorus or perhaps to some extent like a podium or even calcarea phos because there is a phosphorus uh, component to it but calcarea carbs are mostly flabby all very loose and uh, very chilly, they cannot take the cold at all. They're extremely sensitive to cold, all the time having cold. So when you see a chilly person who's fat, flabby, very loose muscle tone, uh, and very, very chilly, catching cold at the slightest pretext, they go out, a little bit of draft of air, they get a cold. They uh, they work in water, house are working in water, they get a cold. So even the slightest exposure to cold or chilly winds or water, they develop a cold. At the same time, there is profuse perspiration, especially around the head, the neck, very sour smelling perspiration. And you can see that in a typical child, a calcarea child, when he sleeps at night, he wants the fan or the AC. But that brings on the cold, and that bring if, he, if the AC is not switched on, he'll probably get a lot of sweat, and that's around the neck, and his head is completely wet by the time he wakes up in the morning. And that wet head will that damp damp head is going to lead to another cold. 
so this is how the cycle of calcarea goes on and uh, if you look at it the oyster shell uh, guards the pearl inside so most of the calcareas like to live or lead a very sheltered life they want to live in that oyster they don't want to come out of it they always seeking shelter seeking um protection seeking security and they are very anxious if they are left alone by themselves to fend in the world so a child who uh, a child who is uh, basically very timid very anxious uh, probably the second or the third child in the family and uh, where there is a lot of conflict at home there are parents fighting or it's a joint family and uh, he's used to a lot of conflict a lot of uh, strife in the family and not able to express himself so he goes into a shell and then he wants somebody the uh, calcareas are always looking for a mother figure so if their mother is not there they look for a figure which resembles the mother and they want to be sheltered by her so calcarea for the calcarea child the mother is one of the most important uh, factors in his or her life and they get very anxious and because uh, it affects the calcium metabolism the calcium assimilation so calcarea child is also very slow and sluggish he'll sit the other children are playing they want to go out play be very active but a calcarea child will sit he will observe he will uh, he may observe and absorb a lot without showing that he's doing so but he'll always remain in the background and uh, reflect that anxiety he doesn't want to go doesn't want himself to be shown doesn't want himself to be projected so he'll keep to himself because he's always afraid that his timidity his confusion his uh, anxiety will be exhibited to others so peer observed a condition of being is a very important uh, rubric associated with calcarea next slide so they are very anxious so they have this anxiety regarding their health a very anticipatory anxiety and begins in childhood as i said a child who has probably been subjected to abuse subjected to conflict subjected to strife becomes very anxious becomes very insecure wants to uh, wonder what is going to happen next a lot of apprehension with restlessness and palpitations and he feels that there's something going to happen all the time the feeling of something impending evil fear of impending evil is a marked symptom of calcarea so they're all the time full of fears a child goes to bed dreams of ghosts dreams of something bad going to happen um, as he as he grows older he uh, if there is if there is a Uh, a boy or a girl in his class who suffers from some kind of a uh, infectious disease he fears that he will also get it he fears that there will be a lot of disaster something is going to happen and he is afraid that in all this i am going to lose my reason i am going to lose my sanity i am going to lose my sense of balance and then he fears that if i am going to lose that and what if others know that i am losing my reason so with that result they, they withdraw further into them, themselves without wanting to get uh, exposed so this makes them very sad they want to go home home is a very important feature for calcarea they are always seeking shelter seeking protection so whether it's a, so whether it's a calcarea child whether it is a calcarea woman or whether it's a calcarea man they are always seeking shelter even a even a business magnate uh, who is of calcarea constitution will still come back want to come back home to his security to his uh, to his abode where he is protected where nobody knows what he is doing nobody is going to observe him nobody uh, the focus is not on him so they always want that shelter where they want to be inside so this this so this anxiety is all the time there they all the time they're afraid that something's going to happen they're afraid that they're going to businessmen will be afraid that they're going to lose their business they're going to get poor something there's going to be a disaster so that fear is all the time with calcarea and uh, let me tell you that uh, i had this webinar a few i think last week on uh, post traumatic stress disorder and uh, remember that calcarea carb is one of the very very important remedies for this condition and now that we are facing this covid 19 epidemic the physical part of the epidemic may get over but the psychological epidemic is is just beginning and it's going to be there and uh, while um, homeopaths are still battling over whether we should be allowed to uh, give homeopathy for uh, the, the symptoms and the complication associated with Uh, COVID-19, but mind you, let me tell you very. Uh, I mean, this kind of prediction is that there will be a lot of psychological fallout of this illness, and we are going to face uh, depression, anxiety disorders. We are going to face neuroses, uh, long-term uh, effects of this uh, pandemic for a long time to come. 
and and homeopaths are going to have a great business they are going to do very well in uh, treating this because uh, nothing can uh, treat the problems of the mind the way homeopaths do and the right constitutional medicine will completely remove the disease from the mind so uh, be prepared for that so while others will be complaining of economic uh, fallout uh, homeopaths are going to really uh, be doing very well <clears throat> so uh, going on to the next symptom of calcita so they are forgetful confused misplaces words and expresses himself wrongly uh, they because of their problem with assimilation you know so uh, remember that the calcitas have a very poor resistance whether it is physical or mental they are not the hardy the tough ones they they are very uh, very timid very uh, uh, very weak in terms of their strength so whether it's physical strength or mental strength calcitas are very weak so even if they are outwardly fat they look uh, corpulent they look uh, heavy they look coarse but inwardly they are extremely those delicate peak people those uh, confused people so forgetful confused misplaces words and expresses himself wrongly poor learning most of them because of the developmental delay also learn poorly they do make up a lot of kalkira children will make up the mental uh, lag later on as they grow older but the physical part will remain fear that people will notice her confusion of mind so as i said fear is a condition of being inability to apply himself she sits because they they are so indolent physically that they will just sit and imagine they will sit and theorize they will want to do a lot of stuff but they are not able to because their their muscles don't support them their legs don't support them so they'll want to just sit and sit and imagine extreme averse to work or exertion and there's just no will power they they know that they have to go out the mind tells them there's always a conflict between the mind and body in calcaria the mind tells them go out work do this So the mind is running fast, but the body is not cooperating. So this makes them very obstinate, ex excessive ill humor. A child, very stubborn. A fat, fair, flabby child. A lot of perspiration on the head. Suffering from recurrent colds and coughs. Suffering from recurrent tonsillitis or throat infections. And extremely stubborn and ill humor. Think about calcaria. And uh, they will self-build. They will do exactly what they want. Head strong. And aversion to others. So they they want. protection they want shelter they want their mother but they are averse to a lot of company they are not the people who will go out and just make friends unlike a unlike a phosphorus or like a podium they be, they will wait for others to come and talk to them and they're always afraid about what the other person is thinking of them pulsatilla also is like that pulsatilla also is afraid of the opinion of others but because they are so vain so frivolous but calcaria is because they are inwardly timid they're afraid of being hurt they think that uh, um, they are afraid of being exposed so that is the reason why they don't want others to observe them the suspicious thing people are looking at them suspicious and he looks at them so that so it's a two way process because he thinks people are suspicious of him he becomes suspicious of them and then they are insecure of course they want to be at home they want everything in place so a calcaria a woman also at home she's a housewife running her home she wants everything she wants her children to be at home she wants her children well taken care of has been coming well on time everything in place even the house will be absolutely in place and they are always afraid even the calcaria woman is always afraid that something terrible is going to happen with her family with herself she is always afraid of uh, that anxiety of uh, health is one of the key features of calcaria but it is only anxiety about themselves and about their immediate family not about the whole world so they are not like costicum which is uh, anxious about the well being of the entire community so they are not they don't have the benevolence of costicum but they just have that because they are afraid of being exposed they are afraid of being uh, uh, forsaken they want to be with uh, want to be sheltered all the time so that's why they are craving for warmth so whether it's at the physical level or the mental level they they want warmth they want hugging a child calcaria child will always want his mother to come and hug him aversion to change because they are so headstrong and they don't go out much do not want any adventure so very indolent okay with whatever the situation is and of course reserved shy and timid because of this condition next one so the keynotes of calcaria ka how would you say what are the keynotes of calcaria ka it's a soric constitution one of the most basic constitutions of our materia medica so uh, that, that is why uh, most of the children require calcaria ka pale weak timid very tired all the time tired so they 
Uh, they cannot climb even two steps, uh, two staircases, you know, without getting uh, breathless. So they have a, even from childhood, they are ten, there's a tendency to obesity. And if you notice that uh, a child who has been obese uh, earlier and he uh, somehow manages to lose weight through exercise or through uh, some other means or through diet, but you'll see that the calcarea face is always chubby. Uh, you cannot miss that. The calcarea face is always chubby. His head sweats profusely while sleeping, wetting the pillow part around. And there's so much of perspiration, mostly on the upper part of the body, never in the lower parts. And uh, the bones are extremely weak, especially the spine and the long bones. Extremities are crooked. Bones are very irregularly developed. <coughs> so this is the main part of calcarea is the bone uh, disorders. So because of the imperfect assimilation, because of the imperfect ossification, so bone issues are uh, some of the keynote problems of calcarea carb. The discharges, we know that are they smell sour along with, uh, because that's a feature of the carbon group. So even magnesium carbonicum will have very sour smelling discharges. Great longing for eggs. So they, they love eggs. So uh, it's very unusual for a calcarea carb to not want or love eggs. So even if, uh, so a, uh, uh, a child who does not like any other non-vegetarian food is probably averse to meat, but will still long for eggs. And because they, uh, because of the low calcium, the low iron, because they are pale, anemic, they crave for, they have this condition called as pika, pika. And they crave for indigestible things. Often they crave when the mother is making, uh, uh, cooking an egg for them. So they will come and they will snatch the eggshell and want to eat that. They will scrape off the, uh, they will scrape off the wall and want to eat uh, that. So they want to eat chalk and indigestible things all the time. And then it's coldness of single parts. So the head, stomach, abdomen, feet, and legs are always cold. They have aversion to cold open air. So although they uh, they sweat so much, yet they don't want the draft of cold air. They would rather have a, a slow, cool breeze, but never a draft. Very sensitive to cold. So cold things, cold drinks, cold air, getting wet are bad for calcarea carb. Next one. Yeah, so what are the conditions where it is useful? Vertigo is one of the very, very important uh, factors for calcarea carb. Because uh, they always have a feeling of there's something in the head. They feel there's heaviness in the frontal part of the head. And vertigo is associated with that feeling. And when they are climbing a step, they feel as if there is some kind of weight in the head. And the vertigo is often because of that. So when they, they they are even afraid of heights, so if they're looking down from a high rise, they'll get this vertigo. Before that, they will have this heaviness on the head. Headache from overlifting, from mental exertion with nausea, mostly left-sided. Calcarea carbonicum is mostly left-sided. Chronic dilatation of the pupils, mucoparillant otuia. So for otitis media, calcarea carbonicum is one of the key remedies because uh, it has extreme uh, fetal conditions of any kind of uh, resp of the entire respiratory tract, whether it is the upper respiratory tract, the nasal catarrh, or whether it is the, the throat or from the chest, catarrh is the uh, constant feature of calcarea cup. And uh, so mucoprivalent kind of a discharge with enlarged glands. So you have submaxillary glands, you have cervical glands, and you have mesenteric glands. So glandular diathesis is one of the key features of calcarea cup. And they take cold at every change of weather. So submaxillary tonsillitis uh, is very common. Uh, one of the uh, problems where calcarea carb is always indicated more often than not. Chest is also very sensitive to touch. And um, uh, even for pneumonias, calcarea carb is one of our leading remedies. Along with, of course, bryony and phosphorus, it uh, forms a trial of pneumonia. Very weak heart, palpitation of the heart. So they are basically inwardly very weak. So the chest part is also very weak. Uremic diseases. Uh, Calcarea carb is very useful for gout. It is useful for uh, repeated urinary tract infections, for uh, uretric stones, for renal stones, uh, for chronic kidney disease, calcarea carb, lycopodium, calcarea sulf. These are some of our leading remedies. Uh, and of course, uh, uremic disease is brought on by standing on cold, damp pavements. Next one. So craving for indigestible things, as I said, milk disagrees. So they they cannot uh, digest milk. A lot of children, uh, infants have diarrhea, which is associated with milk. So they have a sometimes a secondary lactose intolerance following the viral diarrhea. 
and uh, that's when calcarea can be indicated uh, note here very important that uh, chil calcarea carp children are often constipated and they are very happy being constipated a calcarea will never complain of constipation it is the diarrhea which affects the calcarea so when the child gets diarrheic milk disagrees he has craving for eggs craving for indigestible things calcarea carp should be the remedy so they have dislike of fat fatty things butter cheese but they love eggs they love salt they love sweets and um, inguinal and mesenteric glands are swollen and painful and they are better in every way when they are constipated it is the mother who is always anxious oh he is not past stool for four days how is the child he is very comfortable so uh, this is a typical calcarea constitution a calcarea girl if you look this is very interesting because a calcarea grow girl is the one who grows too fast uh because she's plethoric she is a little bees she looks older for her age a 9 or 10 year old girl looks like as if she's 13 or 14 she started her starts her menstruation very early way earlier than uh, her classmates and the menses are very heavy very profuse red absolutely red discharge and because of the profuse menses they become a little weak pale anemic and the calcarea constitutionally is indolent but this but the anemia makes her even more tired and weak and uh, indolent and then as she grows older if, if this this pattern of menses continues then she glands up into something called as amenorrhea and then with that irregular menses and these girls sometimes end up in a condition with a condition called as pcos polycystic ovarian syndrome and then they sometimes also have fertility issues but if if she is treated at puberty with calcarea carbonic and probably she will not have to face these issues later on in life so uh, so they they always uh, they they're extremely um, uh, as i said extremely insecure very timid there is an idea which dominates their mind for example now just an example now this pandemic going on there are calls from some patients i know it is a calcarea carb when they call up again and again and they say that oh my neighbor's got fever so uh, should i take something so that i also don't get it uh, i'm having a sore throat could this be a sign of something more see they they're even afraid to uh, name the disease so they'll say could it be something else or could it be the normal flu so uh, this is how a calcarea will always speak to you so, uh, i uh, there is a case um, that we follow in our clinics very often is that there are two personalities which will always come back uh, they once they leave your cabin and go out and they will they will always knock and come in again because they are so confused and they are so afraid of something wrong going to happen one is calcarea because of the anxiety that they have and the second is phosphorus because uh, they have these panic attacks calcarea carb and phosphorus are very, very close very very allied um, in their application especially the mental symptoms but calcarea is more of an evolving anxiety phosphorus is that sudden phosphorus is any is a it's a very inflammatory kind of an element so phosphorus is very sudden suddenness is the feature of phosphorus at least in the uh, initial phase so they will always have these anxieties these fears these panic attacks and then they will call you up in the middle of the night oh, i'm having a sore throat so could it be something else a calcarea will think about it think about it and they call the doctor and then express their anxiety so this is the difference basically the chill become begins internally in the stomach region and this fever with sweat next one yeah so look at the calcarea carp child the teething picture as we know the fat flabby baby all of us see calcarea carp children in our clinics day in and day out and we know that it works by default so um, with a fair head a big head sour smelling perspiring furiously at night delayed dentition Now, delayed dentition is calcarea carbonicum, but dentition-related issues we often think of calcarea fos. We think of camomilla. We have rheum. We have magnesium carbonicum, and we have aethusa. And what have you? Several remedies. But when there is a delayed, uh, delayed and delayed milestones, so uh, and a child who is diarrheic, uh, milk disagrees with him. He vomits something which is very sour vomit. calcarea carb can be given as a constitutional remedy along with any who always wants to be carried by his mother that's calcarea the rickety child rickets are not very commonly seen now because uh, we are more aware more particular about nutrition so uh, calcium and vitamin d is taken care of uh, during pregnancy itself so mothers who are calcium deficient may have children who develop rickets but this is uh, very unlikely in developed countries or in places where there's good uh, awareness about health 
However, having said that, as I said that calcium absorption does not only depend upon the ingestion of calcium, but if the mother has had an issue with uh, calcium absorption during pregnancy, she's taking calcium supplements, but yet she's low on calcium. She may be born with a child who has a tendency to rickets. So uh, the child, they're very lethargic, dull, doesn't want to move. His limbs are very weak, especially the lower extremities are very weak bones. So uh, they often fall, even when they're learning to walk, Calcarea child will fall very often. So he'll want to have eggs and he eats lime, slate pencils, earth, chalk, whatever. Anything that is raw. He may even go to the closet where you keep your shoes and try to go on and chew on the leather. So these are the typical Calcarea children. And they have night terrors. They want their mothers. They will never sleep in their own crib. Always want the mother or the, the parents with him. Uh, they will worse by cold, raw air, bathing. Bathing is another thing with Calcarea is that uh, they perspire, they have very thick hair sometimes. So when they perspire, they, the hair remains damp and that's how they get a cold. So even after they have a shower or a bath, uh, when the bath dries them after that, sometimes the head remains damp and that's how they get the cold. So a uh, change of weather to cold, physical exertion is something a calcarea will never ever tolerate. Just cannot bear any kind of exertion, any kind of eye strain. Dentition, of course, is the main problem. Puberty is uh, the time when calcarea cup can be very, very strongly indicated in a lot of girls. And even during uh, lactation, calcarea cup can be given to the lactating mother if she does not have enough milk or she has a problem with calcium uh, absorption. And even after taking a lot of calcium, she still has pains and aches in her limbs. You can think of calcarea cup. And uh, towards men, towards menopause, so as I said, every stage calcarea carb can be indicated, but you see that its uh, applications go a little less as a person grows older. And they're always better in dry climate, worse in damp, cold weather, much better in dry weather. And uh, when they have a they, they have a headache because of the cataract condition, cataract is blocked. So when they sneeze, they start feeling better. And after there's one more thing is that calcarea is always afraid of dark. They want light all the time. A calcarea cup child will always want some kind of light. Either they'll want the door open or they will want a night lamp or they will want the bathroom lamp open on because they're afraid of the dark. They're afraid of something which is the unknown. They're afraid of dark. They want to know everything. They want something which is absolutely clear. So that's why calcarea cup is afraid of the unknown. Now, which are the clinical conditions that calcarea cup is most indicated in? You have acidity, so all kinds of acidity, worms, renal calculus, gallstones, uh, biliary dyspepsia is one of the common conditions where calcarea cup can be associated, especially uh, even if that person is not having gallstones, but uh, biliary dyspepsia. So a lot of acidity associated with, uh, with sour, bitter kind of a regurgitation or a reflux. You can think of calcarea cup. Anemia, debility, dropsy, diabetes. These are some of the common clinical conditions. Very weak ankles, weak bones. So uh, rheumatism, rickets, sciatica, spinal affection. So because whenever there is a deficiency of calcium in the bones or there's a uh, improper assimilation of calcium, that's when all the uh, problems in the bones start. And these are all the conditions associated with the musculoskeletal system. So they have problem with uh, caries. So even a, a woman may have a toothache during pregnancy. And that's because of uh, improper calcium assimilation. So, and then they have caries during pregnancy. Think of calcarea carb um, during pregnancy. Along with, of course, MAC carb is one of the leading remedies there. Learning disability is also calcarea carb. Though we, but right carb comes more close there. Uh, so a lot of children who... Uh, are very indolent. It's not that they are mentally uh, backward or they are lagging or they have a lag, but it's just that they are physically so indolent that the mind also cannot keep up. Uh, they, the, the body is unable to keep up with the mind and that's why they have slowness in learning, slowness in application. And uh, they get into a, a kind of a rut where they, uh, they just don't want to move forward. So they'll always remain the way, way they are. And ears and eyes affection of all cataract conditions of the ear and eyes. Think of calcarea carb. And then uh, uh, it's one of the leading remedies for infections because cold, damp aggravates them. So any kind of dampness, any kind of uh, humidity is going to worsen their problem. So it's one of the leading remedies for ringworm. Along with, as we will see, calcarea sulf is uh, better indicated, but calcarea carb as a constitutional can really help ringworm, molluscum contagiosum, all kinds of cold, catara, pneumonia. 
epilepsy is one of the because uh, calcium forms such an important part of nerves so uh, epilepsy and the, the vertigo which is associated with epileptic attacks the cardiac carbonicum can be indicated there and of course all glandular swellings next one are you all with me can you hear me just hope that everybody can hear me if there is uh, if uh, please message me if you can't okay so this is a repertorization of uh, calcarea carb and uh, you can see that uh, look at the rubrics that we have taken what is interesting is that the, the remedies that come along with calcarea you can have a look at that so air cold aggravates head perspiration you can see that there is a lot of perspiration around the head children development delayed or arrested walk late learning to weakness lower limb child late learning to walk gland cervical submaxillary concentration difficult these are all the conditions that we encounter in our clinical practice and that's how we have converted in them into rubrics so all the symptoms of calcarea cava we we converted into rubric and we have made a common repertorial totality of these symptoms fear observed a condition of being mind anxiety felt about mind fear happen something will so they afraid that something is going to happen all the time fear alone of being so these are all the symptoms the, the keynote symptoms of calcarea carb without which you cannot imagine uh, this remedy so uh, these are all the symptoms and uh, we converted them into rubrics and you can see that calcarea carb practically covers each of these rubrics and then you can see that the remedies which follow but please please go back to the repertory the remedy that follow up phosphorus comes very very close especially amongst uh, it matches the mental picture of calcarea to a large extent except that i said that uh, phosphorus is more volatile in its expressions and uh, you can see that what it matches is anxiety what it matches is fear happen something will and what it also matches is fear of being alone so these are the symptoms that match with calcarea but the fear of phosphorus is very different the way presence is also very different lycopodium also comes very close to calcarea in fact it's it's an excellent follow up of calcarea and uh, when calcarea doesn't help you can think of lycopodium however <coughs> uh, the insecurity or the timidity of lycopodium is much different than calcarea lycopodium is more ambitious the more go getter and when it comes to actual performing a lycopodium will perform much better than calcarea whether it's in public functions public speaking speaking on the stage so that's why if you look at uh, so calcareas will be the will be the bureaucrats and lycopodiums will be the politicians that's the difference so um, you can see that lycopodium then the remedy that follows is silica very close to calcarea silica again are timid very shy very insecure but but they are one of the most conscientious remedies of the materia medica they for them duty is uh, the ultimate so they So in terms of calcarea, if you look at calcarea and silica, silica are afraid to be; they don't want to go in the foreground because they're extremely timid and insecure. Barata carb again very insecure. Then the next is naxomica. Naxomica, they want attention, they want pampering, but they don't want to be touched. They're extremely sensitive to touch, to contradiction, to any kind of criticism. And nitric acid again is very very uh, close to calcarea. So you can see these five six drugs which come very. which follow uh, calcarea very well so uh, almost all these remedies are was from cold air so whether it's calcarea phosphorus whether it is silica barata carb all chili remedies so uh, this is how uh, these are the applications of calcarea carb so we looked at what is calcarea carbonicum what is the assimilation what is the calcarea child what is the calcarea adult all the clinical manifestations of calcarea carb what are the applications which are the conditions in which calcarea carb can be given and uh, we will of course be taking up cases of calcarea but before that we will look at uh, calcarea sulfuricum so uh, i everybody am uh, everybody can follow me i i don't know whether everybody is able to hear me and follow me and whether i have kept managed to keep everybody awake uh, but let me tell you that it will get more interesting as the presentation goes forward because then we'll have time for cases as well So this is calcarea sulfuricum, and the reason why I took it up is that unlike cal calcarea carb, which is a very strong constitutional remedy, one of the big best, well-proven remedies of the materia medica, one of the best constitutional remedies of materia medica, 
and um, with it with a very widespread application there is uh, no homeopath in this room or uh, anywhere who is probably not used calcarea carb in a child ever very very unlikely and calcarea salt is just the opposite <coughs> calcarea salt unfortunately hasn't been a very well proven remedy and uh, for a long time it was uh, one of schuzler's um, biochemical remedies so among 12 tissue salts the calcarea salt was very widely used as a biochemic remedy as a tradition and not uh, as a homeopathic application. And that really did not do justice to calcarea salt. And um, uh, recently we have seen surgeons of calcarea salt in its clinical application because it's a wonderful, wonderful gem of uh, our materia medica. One of our leading remedies for abscesses, for wounds which don't heal, or uh, any kind of ulceration, for, so for all for all abscesses, paruncles, follicles, uh, carbuncles, for uh, bed sores, calcarea sulf can be a fantastic remedy as indicated. So, uh, what is the so what is calcarea sulf? It is sulfate of lime. Calcarea carb was carbonate of lime. Calcarea sulf is sulfate of lime. So, it is plaster of Paris, gypsum salt. So, it is uh, it's used for uh, for building for walls for as a cast for falling fractures. So, it's a favorite of all orthopedic uh, doctor. So, and it absorbs a lot of water. Unlike calcarea carb, calcarea salt absorbs a lot of water. So, uh, the sphere of action is connective tissue, glands, mucous membranes, bones, and skin. So, because the calcarea element, the calcarea component, uh, calcarea sulfuricum also has an efficacy for the glands, for the mucous membranes, for the bones, and especially for the connective tissue. So, in terms of connective tissue and skin, calcarea salt is much better indicated than calcarea carb. Next one. Yeah, so the keynotes of calcarea sulfur, it has tendency to suppuration after pus has found its vent. So what does that mean is that an abscess which has burst and is releasing a lot of pus, a particular type of pus, the consistency of the pus is thick, it is yellow and it is lumpy. That is how the pus of calcarea sulf is going to be. So the abscess, whether it has burst, the pus is now out, but the, it refuses, the wound refuses to heal. So it keeps discharging that pus forever and ever until calcarea sulf is given. So in the third stage of inflammation, so calcarea sulf is actually a very, very good clinical remedy and can be given for very deep-seated pathological conditions. So in third stage of inflammation, so when sometime when pus formation has started, when this threatening to uh, ulceration, threatening to gangrene, calcarea sulf can be the lifesaver. So pus or mucus discharges are yellow, thick and lumpy. Glandular swelling, so it like calcarea, it also has uh, calcarea carb, it has affinity for the glands, so, but there's a more, it's a slow, very torpid kind of a, a development in calcarea sulf. And the skin just does not heal. The skin of calcarea sulf is extremely healthy, will not heal all cuts, wounds, bruises, etc. unhealthy, discharging pus all the time. A wound will never close. So if you have a ulcer, it is not going to heal unless calcarea sulf is given. And uh, the difference between calcarea carb and calcarea sulf is that the calcarea carb catches cold very easily. They, and calcarea sulf also catches cold easily. They are both sensitive to cold. At the same time, calcarea sulf is worse from heat. Like calcarea, calcarea seek warm, calcarea sulf want cold. So they want cold bathing, cold water. They are better by uncovering, unlike calcarea abunicum, which wants to be covered all the time. So calcarea sulf is never better with covering. Unlike calcarea carb is insecure, is uh, uh, wants to be in the shell, wants to be sheltered. They're suspicious, they're doubtful, but calcarea sulf is more jealous. They're all the time they want appreciation. They want to they want to be uh, praised all the time. And if they're not praised, then they get jealous. So very often calcarea sulf can be one of the leading remedies for sibling rivalry. Um, to date, I think one of the my favorite remedies has been natural mule for uh, sibling rivalry, one of the leading remedies for sibling rivalry. But we have given calcarea salt in a couple of cases where the physical conditions were very marked and jealousy was an associated complaint. So it was a differentiating rubric and it helped to clinch calcarea salt. Unlike calcarea, which is uh, indolent and anxious, calcarea salt is hurried and restless. Extremely hard. They are also anxious because of the calcarea component, but the sulfur component 
brings into it restlessness and hurriedness so uh, uh, they they are all the time wanting to do something again because of the calcarea component they are not really achieving anything so infants with bloody coryza diarrhea eczema extremely uh, very very strong um, affinity to the skin and mucus membranes so you will have crusty eruption you will have crusty crusta lactea in children the cradle cap and every time they try to dislodge this scratch because there is a lot of itching so every time they scratch the scalp it, it uh, oozes and the oozing is of very thick yellow uh, mucus or pus so uh, this is how the infant of crusta lactea will present with calcarea sulfur next slide so uh, we have inflammation of the eyes so very very useful for abscesses of the cornea in fact it's one of the leading remedies for that so inflammation of the eyes will discharge a yellow matter so if you have a child who is uh, sweaty who does not want the covers at night who suffers from repeated abscesses heat boils who has crusta lactea that is uh, the crust crusty eruption on the scalp and who has agglutinated eyes in the morning so when he wakes up in the morning the eyes are all sticky think of uh, calcarea sulf as the remedy that differentiates it from calcarea carb yellowish discharge from the posterior nares so even in a cold it's all blocked the child is constantly snuffling when there is he's supposed to remove the uh, discharge which is difficult it's always thick and lumpy and yellow painful abscesses about the anus in cases of fistula very uh, even in this is it's an excellent remedy and unlike calcarea which uh, has cold feet calcarea carbonicum always has cold feet and even in a woman if you look at a, a middle aged woman who complains as if she's worn cold stockings she feels as if her feet are all the time damp this is a very typical symptom of calcarea carb but in calcarea sulf you will feel that you will see that there is a lot of burning of the feet because of the sulfur component sulfur also has burning and itching of the soles of the feet calcarea sulf is an excellent remedy for malignant exostosis so kind of tumors malignant tumors when ulceration has set in we have used this in a case of ovarian cancer when uh, the uh, exostosis had burst when the tumor had burst and there was an oozing of very very bad foul smelling yellow thick lumpy discharge and that's when calcarea sulf had given us some relief because the discharge gradually eased out and uh, was much more comfortable after giving calcarea sulf so uh, you can see that many eruptions upon the like boils eczema herpes acne <coughs> a teenager with repeated acne the current thick indurated large acne which uh, pimples which are uh, from pustules and there's a uh, scrofula is a very common uh, uh, manifestation of calcarea sulf so you have scurvy eruption dandruff seborrheic dermatitis pre psoriatic psoriatic stages calcarea sulf is a remedy even for pustular psoriasis think of calcarea sulf next one yes so uh, calcarea sulf again is uh, very sensitive to cold wet weather but they are not better by warmth heat of the room being heated in a closed room aggravates them they like open air they like to be bathed they like cold bathing cold applications and they love to eat and they have love uncovering so a calcarea sulf child will never keep the covering on this one yes so what are the clinical conditions where calcarea sulfuricum is most indicated abscesses boils carbuncles think of calcarea in fact it's a it's a red line uh, symptom abscesses think of calcarea sulf by default the thing that the remedy that comes very close is hepar sulf but hepar sulf is extremely chilly calcarea hepar sulf is given abscesses refuse to mature they don't mature they just remain in that state to touch and very very painful the it's excruciating pain is the whole when the abscess is already ruptured it's burst and the pus refuses to stop when the wound does not heal so both calcarea sulf and hepar sulf are given for festering wounds but hepar sulf more for an abscess which is not burst and calcarea sulf which are for an abscess which is already burst but refuses to heal so that's why calcarea sulf is more indicated in carbuncles and abscesses which keep oozing glandular swellings tumors ulcers cysts fibroids so second patient so even for uh, perianal abscesses or fistulas for uh, chill blains it's one of the uh, it's a fantastic remedy for uh, palmo plantar 
keratosis, when there, is, when there are cuts and there are huge uh, fissures in the soles or in the palms, which keep oozing. And eczema, which is very crusty, which leaves uh, huge scabs. And when they try to be dislodged, there's bleeding and there is a pus discharge from those eruptions. Uh, ulceration of the cornea calcareous can be useful in children again coryza but remember that you cannot have any kind of discharge from uh, uh, any kind of orifice which is not thick or lumpy or yellow only then is calcareous sulf indicated a thin excoriating acrid discharge is not calcareous sulf so crustalactia leucoria again which is thick and yellow uh, very useful in dropsy because calcareous sulfuricum is gypsum salt it is uh, Cluster of Paris absorbs a lot of water, so it can be very useful in all dropsical conditions, very useful in chronic kidney disease, for cradle cap, for gonorrhea, for hemorrhages, injuries, effects of, and pilitis. When there is infection of the kidney, when there, whenever there is a lower urinary tract infection, calcareous sulf is very indicated if there is a lot of pus in urine. If there are pus and uh, if the urine is turbid, pus like, think of calcareous sulf. So these are the clinic patients and just let's look at the repertoire. This is very interesting. Have a look at this. So uh, the indications, let's look at the symptoms which have converted into tricks. Abscesses, suppuration glands, okay. Then discharges of mucus or pus. Abscess, suppurations, pus, fetid. Discharges of mucus or pus, canthi. Discharge secretions, thick. Discretion, uh, uh, discharges, secretions, yellow. Eruption skin crusty, external eruption on uh, crusty milk crust, eruptions on the skin crusty scabby, eruptions impetigo. Impetigo for impetigo, calcarea sulf is one of the leading remedies. We are shortly going to see a case. And restlessness, nervousness. So they are not anxious, they are more restless. And jealousy is one of the themes of calcarea sulf. Now, where can you see calcarea sulf in this? You cannot see it here. You, the first remedy is sulfur, the second remedy is calcarea which goes on to show that calcarea sulf has components of both, of sulfur as well as calcarea. But calcarea sulf is not there anywhere. You have Merxol, you have Lycopodium, you have Hepar sulf, you have Vipitis and Restox, each indicated for some of the symptoms that are mentioned here. But calcarea and sulfur, both when they come together, they are going to show the traits of each of these elements and each of these remedies. So you can see the... The, the affinity for the skin, the mucous membrane, the bones, the glands of calcarea. And you can see the special affinity for the mucous membrane and the skin, the kind of abscesses, the tendency to festering of wounds, the unhealthy discharges, the unhealthy uh, look of the skin, that is of sulfur. Again, there is one more very prominent uh, uh, modality of sulfur which calcarea sulf also has, and that is they are worse from standing. They have varicose veins. Uh, sulfur also has very weak, weak legs. They have burning of the soul, which calcarea sulf also has. And calcarea sulf also cannot stand for long. Aggravation at 11 a.m. is again uh, a sulfur symptom, which is present in calcarea sulfuricum. Calcarea calf is worsening in the evening. Calcarea sulf is much better, always ameliorated, always more cheerful. Towards evening, around 6 o'clock in the evening, they are at their best. So these are the difference between calcarea carbonicum and calcarea sulfuricum each having its own affinity. Though calcarea carb is a more constitutional remedy and calcarea sulf is more clinically proven, but it's one of our gems and one of the gems of our materia medica. And we need to use it more often, more judiciously. And when it is indicated, it is one of the best remedies that can uh, actually not just reverse, can completely turn around a pathological case. So this is the... Uh, the FNT, the, the application and uh, the symptoms and the repertorization of calcarea sulf. So is everybody with me? <coughs> yeah, so I think uh, we are on the same page, looks like. So we go on next to our cases of calcarea carb and calcarea sulf. It was very important to explain the materia medica because probably all of us know the, these applications. All of us know calcarea carb very well, but this, uh, uh, this comparison between calcarea carb and calcarea sulf is extremely important because that's how we will know the clinical application. So let's go on to the cases, Dr. Saili.
Now, this is the case of vitiligo. <clears throat> and uh, although a very cosmetic condition, but in our country, in India, it is still a social stigma. If a girl has any kind of uh, hypopigmented patches <clears throat> on the face or the visible parts of the body, then it is still considered as um, something very negative um, because it's a cosmetic disfigurement and the girl is not going to be able to find a suitable match for her. Things are changing around because people know that vitiligo is a very, very um, superficial complaint compared to the kind of disease that one would be having. So as I was telling somebody the other day, that uh, the diagnosis of tuberculosis is not as devastating as the diagnosis of vitiligo in um, in certain families. This is a 10-year-old prepubertal girl who came to our clinic with her mother six months ago <coughs> with a complaint of appearance of hypopigmented patch. So there was a patch about 2.5 centimeters in diameter on the left side of her chin, increasing rapidly since two weeks. And it just started all of a sudden. And her, the mother said, oh, we just saw a little bit of pale skin below her cheek. And then in two weeks, it just becomes became so big. The skin patch was shown to a dermatologist. <clears throat> and it was diagnosed as vitiligo three months ago. And uh, so they tried all kinds of treatment. Phototherapy was also tried. Deplin cream and Degdan B, that is steroids, with no significant change. There is no itching. The girl does not experience anything. She doesn't complain of anything. There is no itching, no redness, no roughness of the skin. But the discoloration changes from brown to pink to white. So it was initially slightly brown, but then it became pink. And now it's quite white and visible. So the mother is extremely anxious and she brought the child to us. Next one. <coughs> so past and family history. There is no history of any skill ailment in the past. The patient has had history of repeated cold and cough with episodes of wheezing in the early childhood and then uh, she was put on acetylin inhalers and she's better when she takes uh, the salvitum inhaler it gives her some relief but there is a history of uh, repeated cold and cough but no history of any kind of skin problem now this is a life situation the patient stays with her mother in mumbai her parents separated when she was eight years old there were constant fights between the parents father was very aggressive and abusive verbally abusive sometimes physically as well with her mother so uh, so she was so they separated from the father so she subsequently moved to her grandparents residence with her mother and she got very attached to her grandmother because uh, she got all the love and affection from her grandmother which she missed earlier and she looked after her the mother is a, a very dominating person is a control freak and uh, she's very fastidious she wants things in her she wants everything absolutely in its place and she's very strict with her daughter the mother had conceived the child, the patient, after two elective abortions as she did not want to have a child because there was so much conflict with the husband that she didn't want to have a child. But then finally, she they made up and then they decided to have a child through assisted uh, reproductive techniques, the IUI. The patient is very sensitive to parents' quarrels, extremely sensitive to conflicts <clears throat> because she loved both of them very dearly. And on days when there were peace in the house, when there was no parent fights, the child used to be very happy because she would want both her parents to sit with her. Both of them should sit and play with her, watch TV with her. But the continuous conflict home had affected the child as the parents kept using the word, okay, we are not, we, are not, we can't get along now. We have to separate. We can't get along. We have to separate. And the word separation had kind of, you know, it had, uh, it was deep seated into her mind. She, she remembered that word all the time. And even during history taking, she had used this word. Next one. She's now very afraid of being alone. She does, cannot be alone. She wants her grandmother all the time. And she's very attached to her. So she, unfortunately for her, grandmother is all the time at home. She was not working. Her mother was working. But her grandmother was not working. So she felt very secure, very comfortable with her grandmother being around all the time. But because uh, she missed her father and she knew that because she's 10 years old, she knows now that uh, her parents are probably never going to get together and uh, the it's never going to be one house for them now. So she was a previously very sensitive, very mature, very concerned, very happy child. Now she's become introvert, she's become nervous and with very low confidence. Even her grades in school started falling and her teacher started asking the mother during the meetings whether there was something wrong because now she's uh, no longer wanting to communicate with anybody 
she's afraid of staying alone and wants somebody in the room all the time next one yeah physical genitals she desires eggs she loves eggs and she has one egg every day and she said that she can have eggs in any form she likes wild she can have them as omelets fried whichever way but she must have eggs every day she's constipated but not complaining of it this this is the symptom has given next one so the rubrics we took are very fear separation of insecurity abandoned or second feeling confidence want abuse ailments from desires eggs white spots vitiligo white discoloration skin now, so based on that very obvious that we give calcarea carbonicum was administered in the sending potencies first gave 30 c and then after a month when she came for the follow up it was 200 and then it was 1 m very rapid results in, in two to three months this patient so showed remarkable improvement see now in the picture <coughs> now you can see that the uh, before that after the first prescription calcarea cap 30c came back with improvement the hypopigmented patch reduced in size considerably in four months it really showed a lot of difference and not only that not only did her skin improve but you but her mental state improved she was now more communicative she more she was more confident her fear nervousness anxiety have decreased she kept talking about loneliness earlier now she doesn't talk about it so she is much happier and much more sorted now yes now you can see this can you see the patch on the chin on the left side About 2.5 centimeters patch. This was the first time when she came, and this is after four months of treatment on the right side. And uh, for vitiligo, we would say that's a very, very rapid improvement. You can even see some hypopigmented patches on her lips and just below her lip, her lower lip, and those also have disappeared. In the second picture, you can see that. And uh, the best part is that uh, even her asthma is much, much better now. That uh, she she does not need. Is in fact, she responds to homeopathic medicine much better than um, salbutamol or on the or the inhalers, and she uh, she just gets few attacks and that to a change of weather and she settles very very quickly. So homeopathy can, if it's a correct treatment, it can affect the patient at all levels very positively. So the side effects that a person experiences with the correct homeopathic homeopathic treatment are very positive side effects. So while the chief complaint or the complaint that the patient has come with. Gets better, but the associated is so much better. So the child wasn't really affected with the vitiligo as much as she was affected with the asthma. And after the asthma got better, then you could see that there was true well-being, and she looks much happier now. Uh, she got her puberty like she just about she's about eleven and a half years old. So like a calcarea, calcarea, she uh, started menstruating early at the age of eleven, and uh, she's suddenly looking very very big compared to her. Uh, Each so again going in period of calcarea and we hope uh, because we have intervened with calcarea at this stage uh, she will grow up to be a very normal young woman. Next one. <coughs> right. Now explanation is calcarea carbonicum matches the symptom picture almost in its entirety. The feeling of insecurity, loss of confidence, and sense of isolation following parents. Along with the marked desire for eggs, makes calcarea cap a perfect prescription. It is essential to catch the thread that runs through the case. For constitutional prescribing, it is very important to take the case in detail and choose the rubrics according to the theme of the case. So here, the forsaken feeling, the alone feeling, loneliness, the isolation, was the thread that was running through the case. The need for security, the need for warmth, was the thread that ran through the case. Yes. This is the second case. We are going to see cases of calcarea. This is a 50-year-old male patient who presented in our clinic in a very anxious, panic state, very, very anxious, very nervous type. He had been suffering from vertigo since three years, and complaints aggravated turning head, aggravated constipation, aggravated movement. He feels that his vertigo is brought on by all these problems. 
and the concomitant is every time he would get an attack of vertigo he would want to vomit he never vomited though but he would just have severe nausea he would want to go and vomit and uh, as we used to we asked him that whether vomiting gives you any relief so he said whenever i get the attack of vertigo i don't wait till it gets worse i take the vertin tablet which my doctor has prescribed immediately because i don't want it to get worse so fear of extravagance is one more uh, symptom of calcaria because they're so afraid of the consequences they're so afraid of what will happen what could happen if something they're afraid that the problem may uh, compound into something very major if they have a minor cold they are afraid it may turn into pneumonia so it feels better only after taking tablet vertin his need for vertin has gone up this month his complaint started when he was undergoing rest following his cardiac bypass surgery so he had a angina problem and when uh, he went for a check up his ecg was done they advised him to go for a coronary angiography which revealed uh, blocks in his major arteries so then he was uh, advised to go for a cardiac bypass surgery so he underwent the surgery after the surgery he was recovering that's when all the anxiety set in and that's when the vertigo actually became worse next one yeah so the rubric that we took anxiety disease out, panic attacks overpowering vertigo general and vertigo concomitants nausea vertigo turning aggravated motion head off and aggravated constipation so we repertorize it and the remedies most similar and indicated were phosphorus silica kunayam calcarea carbonicum sulfur nux formica aconite and china the reason why we gave calcarea carbonicum is because during convalescence when you uh, when a patient he had time he had time to think and that's when his anxiety manifested so three doses of calcarea cap 200 over 3 days we gave him and that reduced his vertigo by almost 50% after 5 weeks he had another episode when calcarea cap 1m was given as a single dose since then he has not had a single dose of vertigo this is a fantastic case and uh, to really respond so quickly and uh, with so much success for so long because vertigo cases keep coming back but uh, here this patient did not come back with any problem no fallout of the vertigo no uh, sequelae following the vertigo and that was uh, and we be monitoring him because his other the other members of his family are also our patients so we know for sure that the patient has not had any kind of a complication following our vertigo treatment next one Yeah, so the explanation here is that no PQRS symptoms. All we had was uh, vertigo, the symptoms associated with the vertigo, and uh, the fact that he developed this during his uh, when he was taking rest following his cardiac surgery. So it is the one keynote characteristic that can clinch the case. So here, as a complaint of vertigo started after the cardiac surgery, thus the differentiating rubric was ailments, convalescence during or since. And the remedy with four mark complete repertory calcarea cap. That's how we got we could differentiate it from Kuna. We could differentiate it from the other remedy that came up after that. And uh, calcarea cap was the remedy. That is how it actually hit the bullseye. Next one. Go to the next case. Yeah. So we have a case of tinea corporis. This is a 35-year-old female. She came with complaints of lesions under her breast. So she had some itchy eruptions just below her breast and on her abdomen since three months. And she complained of severe itching and hyperpigmentation of the affected area. She said it worse and worse. And uh, she had taken uh, treatment from her dermatologist for some time, and she was diagnosed as tinea corporis. Yeah. Now, uh, again, one thing which I would like to tell you is that. fungal infections are the bane of modern dermatologists in fact uh, they are so rampant now that practically every chronic problem every chronic ailment will be preceded by some manifestation on the skin particularly some kind of a fungal rash so it could be either uh, tinea corporis it could be tinea crudis uh, it could be uh, pityriasis it could be just it could be seborrheic dermatitis or eczema following some contact so it could be some kind of a fungal infection candidiasis another common condition that can precede uh, some chronic infection some chronic ailment and here it was tinea corporis and uh, this patient was extremely distressed and she's been a number of 
cases uh, of suppressed skin eruptions are just not funny because we, we get practically every case uh, which is chronic, which is intractable, which is difficult, has been preceded by scar, some skin problem that has been suppressed at some level or the other. And she's been advised ketoconazole, but with no relief. So she's tried everything. So she's tried ketoconazole, she's tried ketoconazole, all kinds of shampoos, all kinds of lotions, and nothing has given her, even steroid creams have not given her relief. Just some temporary uh, respite from the problem. And the complaints are worse from exposure to cold air and cold water, especially at night. The patient is overweight. She's a typical, she's the leukophlegmatic constitution, as they say, a fat, fair, flabby woman, and uh, very pers profuse perspiration on the whole body. Drenching, she said, it's so bad that it, I, I keep sweating all the time. I have to keep changing. I have to have a bath. Every time I have a bath, it just gets worse. So her sleep is also disturbed because of the itching. And so she's become very anxious now because of her problem. And she wonders whether it's ever going to get better. And she's very chilly because she says, I want to have a bath to reduce the itching. But the moment I have a bath, I know I'm going to cold. So this is again very uh, typical of uh, our family. Next one. Life situation. She stays with her husband, two children and her mother. She went into depression. Her father died two years ago, uh, five years ago. And uh, she went into depression after her father's death. And since then, she's become very anxious because it was very sudden. He died of a heart attack. And uh, since his death, she's anxious about her own health and about her family members. Health. She keeps worrying <clears throat> now that my mother is no more, whether my mother will have a similar issue. But I will have an issue because uh, uh, it's heredity, heart disease runs in the family. Will I also get a heart problem? So she's anxious, become very anxious about things. Even little, little things make her anxious. Next one. And then she can't stay alone because of her anxiety. She wants somebody all the time. Uh, even when her husband is uh, not come from office, she keeps worrying, why hasn't he come yet? So she keeps calling him up to find out where he is and why hasn't he reached home yet. She has fear of darkness. She's very forgetful and doesn't remember names of her relatives or at times the name of the road or can't recollect what she read earlier. And it's because of so much stress, ailments from stress, calculates a remedy. So, uh, inability to manage the stress, inability to take the stress is calculia. So here you can see anxiety trifles about, forgetfulness, anxiety health about, Mind, fear, alone, tinea, ringworm, general, skin itching, cold aggravates, night aggravates, and perspiration profuse. Um, there's one more thing I would like to bring to your notice. Is that very often we, uh, we read too much into the case. We want to make our own perceptions. We want to draw our own conclusions. We often uh, associate the patient's presentation with the events that have occurred in his or her life. And the more the events, the more exciting the case, the more we think that we've got, oh, we've got a complete case. But remember, the, a complete case is not where there are more events in the person's life. It is about how the patient has responded to what has happened to her or him. What each experience, what each uh, assault that uh, he or she has faced, whether at physical or mental level, what kind of effect and what kind of disease it has resulted in. So the cause-effect ratio, the thread that runs through the remedy, the entire sequence of events and how it is manifested into what the patient is now suffering from is extremely important. So that's how you should take. So just take what the patient gives you. And if you take what the patient gives you, then you will be doing a very unprejudiced job. You will not be thinking, oh, is this too common? Is this too rare? Is this PQRS? Is this uh, general? Just take what the patient gives you because what bothers the patient is going to come out through signs and symptoms. And if you are uh, observant, if you know what to take, if you know what to take and what to apply, you will never go wrong in your repertorization. So this is what we have taken, exactly the symptoms she came out with, which were converted into rubrics and applied. So you can see that Calcare is covering almost every single symptom here. Close on the heel, the sepia, because of the condition, because she's a middle-aged woman suffering from tinea, fungal infection, itching. Sepia is a very natural remedy that will come to your mind. But if you have the anxiety that the patient is going through and the anxiety that has manifested into a problem, you'll know that it is a Calcarea case through and through. Next one. <coughs> yeah. So here we gave Calcarea cup, 30 BD for four days. 
followed by SL for one month. We just kept the patient. The reason why we have given a BD dose for four days is because uh, she has been uh, taking so much of medication, whether it is oral or applied local applications, is that giving one remedy, we are not even sure whether she'll take it. So if you give 30 uh, C, which is a very moderate potency, a very mild potency, and give it BD for four days, you can be sure that the remedy has gone in. And she some, uh, you know, that the, the absorption also will happen. If you give one remedy and the patient has not taken, if the taste buds are uh, already overpowered with all the remedies that she's taken so far, the allopathic remedy, perhaps our remedy may not make a dent. So this is the reason why we give it for four days. And then this is followed by placebo, so we can monitor the patient through the month. Yeah, so uh, the patient came for the first follow-up. She was much better in terms of itching, better by 50%. Hyperpigmented lesions are also better by 50%. Mentally, she's much better. See, the, the correct remedy has to have an effect on the quality of life of the patient. You cannot have the chief complaint going, uh, getting better and the patient getting worse. Both have to go simultaneously. And the other way also should not happen. Uh, it is unlikely that the patient will say, oh, I'm much better and her chief complaint is very bad. Or it's much worse. So that's not how you should look at it. Both have to go concurrently. So her anxiety has reduced. The patient kept on SL now. <coughs> now the itching has gone down. The patches have also gone down. The skin is looking much normal. She traveled now. Earlier, she was afraid of traveling on her own because she was so afraid of being alone. She wanted someone with her all the time. She traveled from Mumbai to Pune for a training all by herself. And she stayed there alone. So she went to Pune for a training session. She stayed there alone for All through she was kept on SL. And she just made one phone call to us asking whether uh, it's OK to just continue the medicine the way it is. It was, um, it was more as a cover up for her anxiety as that. But, but she still managed to stay alone by herself without any problems. And. Uh, on the 5th of September, the skin complaints are much, much better. Mentally also patient is much better. And then patient is still kept on SL. Next one. As you can see, see the, the, this is actually the second follow-up. The first time when she came, she refused to get photographed. So this is all that we have. But you can see the difference. Uh, this is the second follow-up. And this is after two months when she was better. All the itching, the hyperpigmentation, the scaling, you can see the patches are much better. You can see the uh, patches of ringworm. You can see the, the peripheral discoloration and then the central clearing, very, very clear in the first photograph. And the second one, you can see the skin, which is almost normal now, except a little bit of discoloration around the umbilicus. The skin is much better. And uh, this is very, very clear. The one which is just below her uh, left breast, you can see the, the patch of tinea. And uh, this is the second photograph, and it's almost cleared up. So this is with calcarea carbonate. And uh, almost two years after the treatment, 2017, uh, two years after the treatment, she continues to be better. She has not come back with the itching. And as I said, that the entire family, uh, this family too, has been uh, coming to us for several of their issues. And uh, she has not reported uh, any kind of aggravation mm -hmm. after that. And she stopped using all the steroid creams and uh, except that she perspires and uh, so she says that can I use some talcum for that? That's all. Otherwise, she does not need anything else. Okay, so next one. Now, this is uh, the next case. Very, very interesting. Now, you can see how uh, calcarea carb has different manifestations. Uh, at every level, calcarea can act, whether it is vertigo, whether it is a fungal infection. Uh, whether it is a, a skin problem like this, whether it's a molluscum, uh, it has it has uh, a lot of applications everywhere. And as I said, it is one of our leading polycrest remedies, very, very well proven. The advantage of calcarea, the more well proven the remedy is, the more constitutional uh, application it can have. A remedy which is not so well proven, it can be indicated and can be given because of its clinical uh, provings. But uh, for a proper homeopathic prescription, the subjective part of the case is very important. Calcarea has that because the way it has, uh, it's one of our finest uh, mineral remedies along with natrum and with uh, phosphorus and of course with causticum, which are also very well proven remedies. But calcarea remains the king of antisorics, very, very uh, valuable in our material medica. Now, this is the case of molluscum contagiosum. It's a five year old male child, resident of Mumbai. 
reported to the clinic on uh, two years ago with complaints of small pearly eruptions on the face since 15 days. <coughs> and uh, the child has been going to the pediatrician. The eruptions just kept on increasing. Uh, they tried to give some uh, first some antibiotics, some applications. It didn't help. And uh, the pediatrician said that if this uh, the way they are increasing, I have to do some cauterization. And uh, the child's mother got so frightened. She said that we don't want to go for such painful uh, treatments for my child, and I don't want to do this. I heard that homeopathy has some. So can you uh, give us something for my child? The child didn't seem to be very affected. Remember, that molluscum is a very benign condition. And it has more cosmetic uh, value than anything else. But uh, the child did scratch as, as the eruptions started increasing. The child started scratching on those eruptions. So the location is the face, the nose, forehead, the perioral region. That's where there is maximum eruption. And sensation, uh, the child bleeds only uh, and scratches only if there is any kind of itching, but not much of itching. And only if he scratches it inadvertently, then uh, there is some bleeding from the site. And no particular modality, no worsening or getting better by anything because the child is not suffering from the problem at all. And how did he get He got it through uh, contact transmission, preschool. He goes to a preschool and other children might be having it and got it from there. <clears throat> Nothing remarkable about the past history except that he keeps getting repeated attacks of upper respiratory infection. So he keeps getting cold, cough, sore throat, uh, a little bit of fever off and on. That's it, but not nothing major. He's otherwise a healthy child. The family history mother has his postpartum depression after the birth of this child. Uh, he has an older sister as well. And uh, he's been treated for the same, yet occasional episodes of weeping. So the mother still has episodes of weeping and uh, depression. The father has had no major issues and he has an older sister. She's eight years old and she is also healthy. So, but there is a history of depression in the family. The maternal grandfather also had depression and he passed away 10 years ago with other issues. Next one. Now, the patient's appetite, thirst, stool, urine, everything is normal. Perspiration was that is very, very marked and it's all over the body, especially over the head. Uh, now, this is, uh, this is characteristic of calcarea, but a lot of children do have perspiration on the head. And will all require uh, calcarea? No, unless there are other indications. Nearly having profuse perspiration on the head is not uh, the indication for calcarea. Although 70% of children are going to require calcarea sometime or the other. So patient wanted to be covered all the time. Now this is very Marxist. He wanted to be covered all the time. He has a quilt. There's a baby quilt, uh, which his mother, his grandmother had stitched when uh, he was a baby. And since then, he's been having it and he wants to quilt every time, whether he goes to bed, wakes up in the morning, he goes to the bathroom with it, he goes to school with it. Even in the school, he in his bag. Although he's not allowed to take it out, but he wants it everywhere. He comes to our clinic with the quilt in his hand and so obsessed with it as if, he, as if it's something very precious. So if you try to take the quilt from him, he gets very uh, insecure, very anxious. And you can see the anxiety on his face. And he starting, his eyes get filled with tears and he wants to cry. He wants, he will wrap the quilt around him all the time. That is very characteristic. The patient had a strong craving for sweets and wanted sweets after every meal. So uh, he was uh, used to chocolate and he wanted toffee. If I think he would ask his mother for a piece of jaggery. Give me something so that I can have it. So he wants sweets all the time. At milestones until the age of three and a half years, patient was only talking in monosyllables. Mother was anxious and therefore started consulting a speech therapist. Note that uh, mother goes through phases of depression. Please go back. Please go back. Yeah, mother is depressed most of the time. Grandfather has a history of depression. This could have an effect on the child. And he and he has an older sister who is very talented, but she is also very sensitive. <clears throat> he was come to other for other issues, but very sensitive child. So in a fact, a very sensitive, uh, very, uh, uh, very insecure, uh, uh, very depressed, low spirited people. This child also became a little uh, drawn and uh, the normal milestones that a child, he, his, his talking, his walking was absolutely okay. His teething was okay, but his speech got delayed until the age of three and a half years. Until three, he would hardly say anything. 
until the age of three and a half years, some monosyllables, but mother got very anxious and she thought that he has a major speech issue. So she started consulting a speech therapist on the advice of a pediatrician. And that also didn't make much of a difference because he wasn't talking. Much. And a speech therapist said that the child is very stubborn and will only talk when he wants to talk. And there's no problem with his, uh, uh, there's no anatomical issue, there's no organic issue, there is no uh, problem which needs any kind correction it's just that the child is very headstrong and doesn't want to speak this is what the speech therapist said so the next one life situation here yeah. the child is a preschooler and stays in the nuclear family with his parents and sister father works in a software company and mother is a homemaker housewife the child is very obstinate and as i said he insists on carrying the quilt everywhere and he would not part with it even for a few minutes and brought it with him to our consulting room as well. He affectionate, he wants to be hugged, embraced, he wants to sit on uh, his mother's lap, he wants to be with her, so he's with her all the time. He's quite friendly otherwise, but strangers and becomes comfortable once he's familiar with them. But he has fear of the dark and wants the light on all the time, even when he's sleeping. So if he wakes up in the middle of the night, he goes for these night terrors and if he's around, he goes, he, he shrieks, he cries, and he's only when he knows that his mother is next to him. So he has that fear of dark and wants the light on all the time. Next one. Yeah, so that, uh, we've repertorized this case here. You can see we've taken insecurity as one of the rubrics. What he desire for, he wants to be hugged, wants his mother. Timidity, initially, others will not make friends easily. Fear of dark, very obstinate, headstrong. He carries a squelch all the time. Development slow, talking slow. Perspiration profuse. Food and drink, sweets, desires and molluscum contagiosum, which is the last symptom we have taken. That's one of the most ordinary and common of all the rubrics. So this is how we have taken, but here everywhere, Alkira is indicated. No surprises, lycopodium follows very close. Silesia follows, phosphorus, natrimune. You can see how uh, logical the order of the other remedies. Look at the other remedies which are coming up. And uh, many of them would be, if, if Calcarea was not coming up so well, you would still think of lycopodium because it's one of our excellent remedies for uh, skin issues like molluscum. Silicia is one of the main remedies for molluscum. But the insecurity and the timidity, more than timidity, the anxiety of calcarea is very marked because you're that desire to be hugged all the time, wanting to be near his mother, fear of dark, and his headstrong, stubborn nature can weight everywhere, almost bordering on uh, anxiety neurosis is very, very typical of calcarea. So uh, look at how we've given it. Next one. Yeah, so Calcarea Cup, 200 BD for four days. 200, a slightly higher potency was chosen because it was a very characteristic uh, remedy. You could, uh, we were almost sure of hitting the bullseye. We were so sure of the remedy. And um, this you can use as a thumb rule is that uh, the higher you go up, uh, you know, in terms of subjective symptoms, the more you find the cases, the more complete the cases, the stronger the mental symptoms, you can give, you can take potency higher and you can make the repetition absolutely infrequent. Just a single dose might suffice. But when you're using it for clinical purposes, when you, when the manifestation, when the uh, presentation is more uh, clinical and, made, and the remedy is based more on the pathology that presents with, and there are not too many characteristic symptoms, but one or two characteristic symptoms which you can use as differentiating rubrics, uh, like the keynote method that we often apply. Uh, in that case, you can give a slightly lower potency, like 30, uh, 12 perhaps, but not, we don't go below that, at the most 12 or 30. And uh, you can give a little more of repetition, perhaps two or three times you might need to repeat. The reason is that when, uh, not be a constitutional remedy, but it is the most indicated remedy at that time. And when you give that, uh, there will be amelioration. The case will open up for further constitutional prescribing. So it is possible, like how, as I said, Dr. Bichulkas often says, is that you don't find pure constitutions very much now. 
most of the constitutions are layered and you need to remove one veneer after another to go to the core constitution and uh, so core constitutions are only in children that two in children who are brought up normally in children who have a very normal childhood most of the urban metropolis kind of a uh, environment do not give our children normal childhoods nowadays children are born with layers because mothers have such complex personalities have such complex issues that children are also born with a lot of pathologies at the outset and we might need to give a series of uh, remedies till we arrive at the core constitution and that can happen if you observe if you're if you're an unprejudiced observer if you're very objective in your analysis and you don't allow your constitution to get interfere with the patient's constitution only then that is possible next one <clears throat> yeah so this is the follow up you can see on uh, after a month no new eruptions old ones have dried up it's in the action of the previous remedy was continuing so no new symptoms again so we kept the patient on sl uh, another month later all the old eruptions fell off uh, only few eruptions on the forehead were remaining no new complaints and patient is also generally better the remedy action is still continuing patient is showing improvement so again no intervention required but on uh, 5th of february no new eruptions but patient continues to carry the quilt he is still obsessed with the quilt so everything remains calcarea calm except that we feel that probably we need to step up the potency here because uh, the early one has stopped acting so we give calcarea calm one and one single dose and as i said the more similar the remedy the greater the susceptibility to that remedy and the higher the potency required so we give one m so no new eruptions and now patient has stopped using the quilt he comes to our this is an absolute fact he comes to our consulting without the quilt you can see the pictures you can see the eruptions molluscum this is after the treatment all the eruptions have fallen now painlessly gently effectively and uh, the correct remedy is going to take and uh, i have read and i i make this my uh, maxim now is that the correct homeopathic remedy not only removes the symptoms but it removes the disease from the mind and the consciousness of the patient so you can see that it has altered the constitution for the better the child is more uh, with the circumstances remaining the same so the mother continues to have her uh, uh, you know thoughts of depression the family situation hasn't really changed uh, his relation with his older sister remains the same uh, the child is much better now his speech has improved and you could say that it's a natural fallout of uh, growth and development but uh, but we can we can see that the cause effect is very clear though. the moment the remedy was given it started acting in the next 2 3 months the molluscum got better the patient got confident he stopped using the quilt and his speech is also much better and now he talks so much that his mother is asking us to give us some remedy so that he stops chattering so much so this is calcarea cap <coughs> thing so after case of calcarea carbonicum we have taken more cases i think so now we go on to the next case which is the calcarea sulf now the case of vaginal eruptions boils This is a 36-year-old female patient who presented a complaint of pustular eruptions near the vagina and labia since four or five days, and the eruptions are very painful. Better by uncovering. This is an acute. And uh, this patient uh, had come to us for some other problem almost three years before she came now, and uh, she had burning pain in the vagina. And one of the boils was oozing. There was so much of discharge; it was yellow and thick. <coughs> she had history of leucorrhea, which was also thick. yellowish discharge and patient was very anxious and restless because she thought she had heard from somewhere that a continuous discharge or boils around the vagina could mean cancer so she was afraid that uh, she would develop a malignancy so she was so afraid she, the first question she asked doctor is this going to be serious is this going to be will this turn into cancer will i have to take some treatment for that so she was very anxious while she was narrating her complaints and she had history of some boils one year back she had not taken any treatment for that but she had recurrent boils in the body and she has maybe she just applied some local application but nothing else next one yeah so it is options boils for uncles painful boils are very painful pain burning smarting vagina this is all that the information that we had nothing else we kept asking no further history was given 
So pain, burning, smarting, vagina. Eruptions, discharging, moist, yellow. Eruptions, pustular, uncovering desires. She said that she feels like removing a clue because it's, it's so irritating, so much itching. And uh, she feels better when there is some cool air. So skin particles, boils, recurrent tendency, leukorea yellow and thick and restlessness, nervousness. Next one. Yeah, so prescription and follow-up. So based on the totality, calcarea sulf, 30C, again a moderate potency, twice a day for three days. That's it. Next day, because this was acute problem, so <clears throat> patient would have wanted relief immediately. So next day, the patient reported <clears throat> that pain had significantly reduced and oozing had also come down. After three more days, patient reported saying that boils had reduced remarkably. Now there is no pain, no burning, and no itching. And the leukorea also has decreased considerably. Patient is now kept on SL. After one week, no boils, no pain, leukorea gone, anxiety also reduced significantly. So even in acute now this patient had not been on antibiotics, she had not used any other treatment. She thought of taking homeopathy first and that's how she approached us. So here calcarea, you can see how the remedy has acted. So based on the totality, calcarea sulf 30 ml uh, was given and that's how uh, she got her relief. Next one. So along with the chief complaint of low discharges, better by uncovering an anxiety with restlessness indicated calcarea sulf in totality. So even if they are clinical manifestations, <clears throat> there is one rubric, one symptom that is very uh, characteristic and it goes with the uh, patient's statement that is the restlessness that she had, the anxiety that she had, which was very typical of a calcarea element. So the, the boils, the typical discharge that she had was yellow and thick, it was foul smelling as well. So calcarea self proves that it has marked action on the skin and tendency to boils and suppuration. So all boils suppurations, all kinds of abscesses, paruncles, carbuncles, which are oozing, thick and yellow lumpy discharge, and uh, which continue to ooze. And the patient is very distressed because of the constant oozing and because it does not heal. Always think of calcarea sulf. Next one. Now, this is a very, very good case with that we had. And um, you know how we have some favorite cases and uh, some cases which make you feel proud of being a homeopath. And uh, this is one of those. Uh, this is the case of pulmonary pyoderma in Petigo. This is one of our regular patients. She'd been coming to us for some years now. <clears throat> she was treated previously for psoriasis. We had presented this uh, psoriasis uh, in an earlier webinar of this whole case. And it was an extremely complicated case. and. Uh, we're happy that we have brought uh, the quality of life back into this patient uh, because she was so distressed, so upset, and uh, her life was almost ruined because of a psoriasis. And she's so much better now. And she's been asymptomatic for more than one and a half years. So she didn't come to us for more than one and a half years. And we, uh, we've been monitoring her because through telephone calls, and she said she's much better. But she presented one, one day, she just called up and she said, I have these large eruptions on my face and neck. She said, I had just, I had fever for a few days and I had some mild throat symptoms. I just took Prosyn, I just took paracetamol, a couple of doses of paracetamol, that's it. I didn't take anything, thinking that it's a, uh, it's a minor viral thing and it will pass off. Uh, so my fever went away. But after that, these eruptions started on my face. They're very thick, crusty, and they are now started discharging, a yellow discharge. And she said, they are now so bad, that they kept increasing and getting worse and I don't know what to do. The all around her mouth, her chin, cheeks and below the eyes. And she says, I'm not in a position to come. Can you do something? I can send somebody to pick up my medicine, but I cannot come in this situation. I will. Uh, so we asked her to uh, send picture with this. Uh, so she was very reluctant, but then she did. So uh, she said that I actually am due to give. And how can I go with this condition? How can I go to my exam hall with this face? Can you do something? You have to do something right now. Or what shall I do? Shall I see the dermatologist? So it was a big challenge to us. Um, it wasn't that we don't refer patients to dermatologists in acute conditions. But here, this was a very 
uh, challenging case that we had taken up earlier and we had brought her out of very difficult situation, very difficult condition of psoriasis. And it, we didn't want her to get aggravated again in that area. So we decided to take up this challenge. So we said, please send us your picture. And the eruption, she said, were uh, initially inflamed, they were red. But then they became very itchy and turned into very large fluid filled blisters. And she said, what can I do now? So she sent okay. us her pictures. We'll show you the, that in the end, but we'll show you how it went. So based on the history of fever, the nature of eruptions and the discharge and the permanent character of the skin, the history of fever, nature of eruptions and the discharge and the permanent character of the skin it was getting very bad, very rapidly. So we gave her one dose of pyrogen 200, followed by calcareous of 30C, BD for three days, and asked to send a picture after three days or report earlier SOS. The reason why we gave pyrogen was because pyrogen is, uh, pyrogen goes, <coughs> in fact, it's a very close uh, remedy to calcarea salt because it covers the pathology, it covers the permanent nature of the problem and the septic condition. So pyrogen can be given in septicemia and septic conditions either as an intercurrent or to stop the uh, process of cure where you require rapid results. So we, there was just no time because she was getting aggravated very, very rapidly. So we gave her one dose of pyrogen 200 followed by calcarea sub 30C because of the history of fever and the nature of eruptions and the discharge and the permanent character of the skin. The discharge was thick, yellow, crusty, oozing um, uh, eruptions. That's the scabby nature of the eruption. So we gave her calcarea salt. And we told her, please send her a picture after three days. Next one. So the explanation that calcarea sulfuricum is one of the gems of our materia medica. It never fails in cases of impetigo, boils, acne vulgaris. Look at the manifestations. Impetigo, boils, acne vulgaris, abscesses, diabetic carbuncles, any suppurative crusty eruptions which secrete yellow thick discharge. In this case also it worked very well. So pyrogen was given to quickly overcome the pathological obstacle as the progress was rapid and permanent. And if the indicated remedy is right, and when it is given at the right time, it will give very quick and effective relief and also save the patient so much distress and cost also. You can look at the pictures and decide for yourself. So this is exactly up to four days. This is the picture that you sent to us. When the eruption become permanent and they started oozing, can you see the yellow discharge? If you can actually uh, zero down on the screen and see it, you can maximize and see it. You can see the yellow crusty eruptions and the oozing. The eruption just below her right eye. We can't show you the entire face. There are some eruptions in the forehead as well, all around her. <clears throat> but they were so bad that she was extremely distressed. And she said, How will I give my exams? And this is after three days. And she sent the picture. She went happily, gave her exams, and so grateful. Uh, this is some, this is the kind of happiness that we as uh, healers, as doctors, as homeopaths are always seeking. They cannot be quantified with anything else in the world. And when you get these kind of results, we want to show these results to people who scoff at homeopathy or skeptics who believe that it cannot work or it's a placebo effect. You can see that this cannot by, have been uh, achieved by any kind of a placebo under any circumstances. It is only the right homeopathic uh, remedy which was given at the right time which has done this. And while they appear miraculous, these results, as homeopaths, you must be grounded. We must know that they are not miracles. They are a logical sequence, a logical effect of the correctly given homeopathic remedy. That's it. They appear as miracles, but they are absolutely natural uh, cures. They are natural uh, effects. They are natural uh, results of the correctly given homeopathic remedy. And that is how we should be uh, treating. High grade is going to improve if we give the correct remedy by doing the process very correctly. So whether it is the, taking the case, whether it is taking, noting the symptoms, converting the symptoms into rubrics, repertorizing the case, and then choosing the right remedy in the right potency. It's the whole process, which is very scientific and very rational and not at all complex. It is very simple if you follow the fundamental rules of homeopathy. So thank you very much. I think we've come to the end of the session. Is that right? Yes, that's right. 
So uh, this was calcarea carbonicum, calcarea sulfuricum with their constitutional symptoms, with their applications, with their clinical provings, with their clinical indications and with the cases. So now I'm open to questions. I'm open to any kinds of doubts which, which I can solve for you. Hopefully we can have some nice discussions. One minute, let me uh, am I audible? I'm audible. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you are audible. Right, right. Yeah. If there's uh, anybody who wants to ask the doctor anything, you can request for permission, and uh, we'll we can give you. Yes, Doctor Sunita. Yes. Can we also see the person who's asking? Okay. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, she has to give access to her mic and her video, okay. and we can see her and she can speak uh, directly. OK. Or she can type her question if she's comfortable with that. Yes, you can also type the question if you want. Oh. She did not get access. Okay. No, she probably is. Are there any questions? What about you, Gudni? How did you like this webinar? Are you able to hear? Kartik, you can ask any questions if you like. Ah, uh, no, it, it, it was so much of information, uh, Sujana. <laughs> There's so much of information that you've given. It, it's going to take a while for us to absorb this. OK. Yeah. Well, are you in the Calcarea state? <laughs> no, there are so many layers. <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah, one minute. Let me check. Let me let me put out a poll. Uh, to, yeah, somebody's asked uh, in molluscum contagiosum case, yes. and it be started with calcarea 1M, one dose. This was asked right. by Dr. Viral Shah. Mm -hmm. All right. No, we did not start with. We did not start with Banim. Banim was given when the molluscum started going down, but the patient's uh, mental state did not change. Uh, the patient continued to carry the quilt. If you, real, if you remember the case, the child had an obsession with his quilt, and uh, he kept carrying it everywhere he went. And uh, this symptom had not gone. So uh, this is something that was uh, a part of his... Uh, it, it was almost a pathological symptom because it was an obsessive state that he was in. And when we gave uh, calcarea 1M, after that dose, the child improved remarkably. His molluscum also, of course, had started disappearing with the first dose of calcarea. But his uh, obsession with his quilt came down after calcarea cup 1M. That's how it was. Yeah. So he wants to know whether it, it could have been started with 1M rather than 30 and then go on to 1M. See, in children, what happens is that especially whenever there is an infection, now uh, molluscum contagious is a viral infection. So we'd rather not uh, go into any potency that might use any kind of aggravation. So we start with the potency which is very moderate. So we can always, from two, we can always go on to one end. But if there's an initial aggravation, you will not know whether it is the, it was the potency or the patience. So we always prefer to start with, especially in an acute state. Because the child had come with the molluscum, which was increasing rapidly. You could see, did you see the picture, how rapid it was? The, yes. Uh, the, the, yes. So we didn't want any kind of aggravation. So that's why we gave 200. And then patient did improve immediately with uh, calcarea cup 200. And then after 1M, he, uh, and 200 was also slightly higher potency. So we used it because we were almost sure of the constitutional picture of calcarea. But 1M was introduced because uh, it had reached a kind of an SQ, a status which he wanted to remove, and that 
one and potency succeeded in doing that okay yeah he also yeah. wanted wants to ask whether uh, why did you choose uh, one minute yeah let me read it out the child was carrying the quilt why did you not take clinging instead of timidity instead of instead of timidity oh. yes <coughs> you could take clinging as well but here the uh, the what we took was uh, it was more of if you realize that the way the child the child's temperament manifested was he was actually a very timid child and uh, when he came for so it took a took a several meetings with him for him to open up a bit and uh, he once he opened up he became very comfortable and which is a very typical symptom of calcaria so the the initial uh, inhibition which is there with strangers is very marked in calcaria and even with uh, even at home he was comfortable with people around him he wanted his mother he wanted his sister he wanted the familiar people around him he was afraid of the dark and so all these uh, symptoms were converted into rubrics and those were taken as a chemo symptom even if you take clinging as a symptom it's a very good question even if you take clinging calcaria will still be indicated see remember it is the it is the broad picture that must the the remedy must fit into uh just splitting the uh, symptoms into uh, um into their you know what we say like splitting hairs may not sometimes really help what is important is that the remedy must cover the broad picture of the of the constitution and that's what calcaria was doing <clears throat> so whether it was clinging or whether it was timidity or anxiety or insecurity calcaria was covering everything and as i said they said that silicia was also coming very close in fact it was the next remedy lipopodium was but if you look at the overall picture the overall temperament of the child along with the physical manifestation calcaria was fitting to the team. Uh, that was asked by Dr. Sunita Agarwal. Yes. So, uh, does anybody else uh, have anything to ask, Dr. Sujata? Yeah, I guess. So the, either they like the presentation so much that there's no need to ask. <laughs> they didn't like it at all, so they rather the not. <laughs> No, we'll uh, anyway. We'll be sending you the recorded version of this. So, if anybody wants to ask you anything, they probably will message you directly, and uh, you know, get to yeah. figure out what they want to ask. Yes. yes, it's a very exhaustive one, uh, Sujata. I mean, it's uh, two hours is a huge seminar for just two uh, two remedies, and I think you went into all the uh, facets of calcarea. Uh, Solf and calcarea force. So, thanks a lot for that. We enjoyed it. And uh, let me put out a small poll to see if anybody has. Smita Mahajan, we love the presentation. Thank you so much, Dr. Sujata. Goodney, totally agree. Great info on calcarea solve. Thank you. So there you go. <laughs> you got some nice feedback. Right. 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 So thanks, Goodney. Thank you all for coming. And we hope to see you at more seminars. And you, Dr. Sujata, you as well. We'd love to have you yes. share more seminars with us. Sure. Yeah, sure. and share your knowledge. My pleasure. Yeah? Thank you very much right, for being then. such an attentive audience and for the smooth proceedings, Karthik. Thank you. Thank you. Thank no you so much. Yeah, no, no, no glitches. And also thanks to Siali and uh, Vaidehi as well. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you, so much. Thank right. you ma'am. Yeah. And everybody who wants to have or see or discuss more cases, we're always welcome on our Dr. Sujata Nights Homeo Insights on Facebook. Right. right. Okay then.